Hey guys, welcome back to another Chief Pep video. So, as you know, this is part three of a series that I'm recording about my um, suspension upgrade in my Honda ST1300. But um, of course, these videos are for everyone uh, who is interested in suspension. So. I'm riding a, my bike with uh, my front suspension done with Wilbers and I've got my Nivomat rear suspension in this bike. Now the previous two parts uh, were about the front suspension. I show you a few of those clips here. So if you haven't seen those, um, make sure that you watch them because there's a lot to yeah, know about front suspension and what the differences are and how important it is to maintain your front suspension. Um, but this uh, video is obviously about the Nivomat rear suspension. So let's have a look at how we installed the, that rear suspension. So Edgar, we have the original rear shock here, um, what do you see? Yes, hi guys, welcome back. Uh, we have the original shock absorber from the ST1300 uh, in the workshop now. And we now can see and test if the preload adjuster is still working. You see here the preload adjuster knob, when we open it, just be prepared of a spring and a small clicker ball which comes out so when you take this off you have here a ah, small ball yeah. and a small spring which does the clicker uh -huh. here it is yeah. otherwise you will lose it and it yeah, jumps yeah. away yeah, yeah. What does this knob do? Yeah. There is a wheel on it, and if I turn this, there should be some resistance, and the oil is pumped from this cylinder through this hose into this cylinder, and it compresses the spring. Uh -huh. So we will get more spring preload. Okay. So, as you can see, this knob is empty. Okay. It doesn't turn anything. So there are no hydraulics anymore? The, uh, it has leaked yeah. and it, um, there is not enough oil in it. Yeah. If I... Here I feel a little bit of resistance. And then take care. If I turn on this knob, you see the cylinder is coming out. And the spring pressure is set. Oh yeah. Yeah, yeah, it's, it's moving. Indeed, it's moving. You see? Yeah, yeah. So it is um, only using half of the spring preload, I presume, yeah. or even less. Yeah, and um, is, is it a cause of yeah, just poor maintenance, or is it normal that it loses uh, the hydraulics, or is leaking, or? What, yeah, after uh, after several years and mileage, yeah. um, you yeah. always lose a little bit of uh, of oil, yeah. and in this system, it is very uh, important to have it completely filled yeah. because of the lack of preload. Yeah, but could you repair this? Yes, it is possible. Okay. Okay. 
that is perhaps an option to show you in the next video. Yeah. Um, I'm very curious, yeah. And then we can open it and see if we can restore it and yeah. replace some parts for you. Yeah. So you can use it again. Yeah. But now we're going to use a different rear shock. Yeah, a completely different rear shock. Yeah. We're here anyway, so... <laughs> I here have the Wilbur's uh, Nivelmat shock absorber. Yeah. As you can see, it is quite similar to the old one. Yeah. The length adjustments and uh, the thing you r already see Im immediately is that there is no reservoir on it and an hydraulic preload adjuster yeah. Yeah. so this one is working uh, quite similar as this one only um, you can't adjust anything and the shock d does it all by itself so Edgar uh What's the difference? Okay. Uh, as you can see, this one is a hydraulic function. Yeah. Uh, herein is a cylinder, yeah. uh, a piston. When you turn this knob in or out, yeah. the piston is moved in. Yeah. It compresses the oil through the hose yeah. in this cylinder and pushes the spring right in yeah. or letting the oil flow out and then the spring uh, uh, um, goes through its original length again. Yeah. Okay. What you see and can replace is uh, the preload adjuster hydraulic mm -hmm. and you can replace it for example by another shock absorber yeah. as you can see here yeah. here you see the Wilbur shock absorber um, it's quite similar to the uh, standard and the original one yeah. so you can adjust here on the OEM shock absorber you can adjust here the rebound yeah hard and soft yeah you see that here so if i yeah. turn this it's hard and if i turn this way it's soft yeah with the wilbur shock you can always um, also do that by adjusting the rebound knob yeah. in the bottom of the shock open c closed yeah. and open and also you see here the hydraulic preload adjuster yeah and with the same knob as i have here yeah so if I turn this one in or out, yeah. I press the oil inside this yeah. cylinder and push the spring in or out. Yeah, but to be honest, um, I have, ha have had several bikes. In practice, I don't really adjust it a lot. Is that common or? Uh, yes, the main <laughs> problem for the most guys is that you are, um, you want to drive your motorcycle. Yeah. Yeah. So you don't want to spend enough, um, um, enough time on, uh, on uh, how to set it up properly. Yeah. Or, or you just leave it in the wrong settings because the combination is not good. Because you have so much yeah, to dial in. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, so and that's why this one comes in. Yeah. This is a completely automatically um, shock absorber which uh, uh, keeps the motorcycle up in the right position yeah. spring preload and damping yeah yeah and um, i already saw this one it's a really complex system which is way too complex to explain but i can uh, imagine that this is quite a, a special uh, uh, rear shock it's not your average shock no it's a really special shock because it does everything everything automatically yeah. um, it will set your uh, right height your correct damping all without electronics yeah. so only with uh, oil yeah. and with pressure okay. wow um, I'm really excited and uh, for what kind of bikes do you advise this type of shock this one is especially uh, uh, very good on uh, a heavy touring bike yeah. like yours, yeah. uh, especially on because you are driving alone yeah. or with somebody uh, um, in the duo seat yeah. or with some luggage. Yeah. Uh, so you always have a different kind of force on the motorcycle. Yeah. And this one is really um, helpful in, uh, in, in, in not doing the adjustments anymore yeah. because it does it for you. Yeah. completely uh, safe automatically yeah. and without any um, electronics great thanks let's put it in yeah let's start we are now going to mount
the Wilbur's Nivermont shock into the motorcycle. And, and that's really easy. <laughs> well, hoping it fits instantly. <laughs> Just one precaution. Read the instructions very carefully, please. Because it has to mount it in a proper way with the sticker to the driving uh, side of the motor. Wow. So the sticker of the Wilbur's to the back and the sticker of the production to the front. Why is that? Do you know that? Yeah, that is because of the pressure inside the system that it works properly. Okay, okay. Installation, very easy. <laughs> you slide it in. <laughs> wow. <laughs> and that's it. Great. Let's go. Yeah. Big difference? As you can see now, the ride height is also a little bit higher. That is because of the length of the shock is a little bit longer than the standard length uh, to ensure a better performance of for steering. Okay. So let's pause there for a moment because um, this is quite an important thing that Edgar is telling here. Um, as he told you, this rear suspension, this nivel mod, is uh, 13 millimeters, or in other words, three centimeters higher, longer, I should say, than the standard suspension. Now, why is that? Because um, uh, Wilbur's, uh, because Wilbur's found out that this bike reacts way better if you make that rear a little bit higher. Uh, so this is obviously implications for the riding experience and I can tell you that is way different than uh, standard because the bike is more agile, it feels uh, way lighter, uh, it was already feeling lighter with the front done but especially with that rear a little bit more, uh, more up, uh, a little bit higher makes the bike stand more on the front nose and what I usually uh, um, uh, felt when I was riding my SC1300 I felt that the, 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 the front was kind of searching sometimes especially on the highway it was kind of searching and um, that's completely gone and I'm really happy for that because I ride uh, always brand new tires uh, with a real good profile, good grip. Uh, I like, uh, uh, I'm a little bit more sporty. Um, I like my bike, uh, um, so I like my suspension a little bit more stiffer than normal. Um, and, and, and now that the that stance is a little bit different, I just feel that my bike is more agile and more sporty. 
uh, which I really, really enjoy. Um, furthermore, um, this riding position has implications for your side stand and your center stand. Uh, I'm not making a really big deal out of it because I have just a uh, MDF uh, in my garage, which is three, three, uh, three centimeters. And that way I put my side stand on there. So my bike is still in the, in the same stance if I put it on the side stand. And if I would like to do uh, my rear tire or uh, like new uh, brake pads or I have to find um, where I can fl inflate my tire, I just put a, a, a small board under my middle uh, middle stand as well. Center stand, I should say, sorry. Uh, because if I don't, uh, the, the rear wheel touches the ground right now. And do you feel difference? Yeah, you have now a lot of comfort and it's really smooth. Yeah. You see that? And we have to test it. Yeah. Ooh. So I just uh, dropped off my daughter, she was on the back and uh, that's when you really feel that nivel mod because uh, the very nice thing is it adjusts the shock depending on the weight that it feels and um, yeah that, that's, that's unbelievable uh, and the, the best thing is um, and this, there, there are basically two things which are so great about the nivel mod rear shock. Uh, one of them I already kind of told you on the highway uh, is just the stability of the bike which increases so much but the other thing that you really feel the rear shock is these kind of roads so the less paved roads with a lot of bumps and crests how it absorbs uh, is unbelievable um, I used to ride a GS 1200 as I told you in other videos and, and I kind of have the same feeling that I'm going so fast over these roads compared to the standard shock. Now, I, of course, you cannot compare uh, the, these shock absorbers with uh, that of a GS. Uh, but the feeling that I have is that I'm so fast on these less paved or uh, uh, roads that have no asphalt. Uh, I'm so fast over them compared to the rear, uh, the standard shock, I have to admit. Uh, of course, if I would ride with GS, it would be way faster, but the comfort that you feel on these less paved uh, roads with, with bumps and humps and everything, and how it absorbs and, and keeps that rear wheel um, on the ground and that you keep feeling traction, uh, and you don't don't jump off uh, out of your seat. Uh, that feeling is uh, yeah, is indescribable. Um, and that's when you really start to appreciate a, a rear shock like this. Um, so all in all, if I um, have to give my final verdict, um, I, I would never go for a manual adjustable uh, rear shock. I really would go for this Nivo mod. Um, and uh, yeah, I've made my choice. This is this is uh, this is just great. Um, I'm really really happy uh, with this rear shock. So we've uh, finished the job. We've got new front suspension. We've got a new rear suspension. Both uh, we've done that with Wilbers. Um, Edgar, we still have our uh, uh, original rear suspension. Uh, what could we do with that? Do we throw it away or can we do a revision? What what uh, possibilities are there? Yeah, we can, uh, for example, we can open it and uh, uh, check how the situation is after so much years yeah. of use. Yeah. Uh, perhaps look after a rebuild if you are interested 
or the viewers are interested in that. We can also open it and, uh, and show the people what's inside and try to rebuild it. That's a good idea. So, okay. So what we can do is we can check if this suspension, uh, uh, yeah, what is leaking, what is broken, how could we do a revision? So we could definitely uh, open it. So if you are interested in opening this rear suspension, you want to see it, uh, leave a comment in the section below. Leave a comment there if you want to see that and perhaps we'll make a uh, new video of that. But after that, um, this was the series of the Pan-European and the Wilbur suspension and uh, I hope you enjoyed it. And um, I am again very grateful, Edgar, that you uh, received me uh, for doing all this. So thank you, thank uh, HK Suspension for working on my bike. And um, I hope you enjoyed it too a little bit. <laughs> it was really uh, a nice pleasure uh, in, okay. uh, in working on the bike and show everybody, uh, especially the mechanical stuff yeah. and how it works. Yeah. And, uh, I'm really pleased um, that uh, we have finished this series yeah. and uh, hoping on the next one. Yeah, thank you so much. And I'll see you in the next one. Bye. Bye bye. Ta 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 ja. Dit 1, 2, 3. Oké. Nee.